Thank you so much, Mr. Cole. Our next speaker is Colin Cornforth. Mr. Cornforth is currently a history teacher at Torrey Pines. In the past, he's taught AVID in math while also coaching cross country and track. Mr. Cornforth strives to give all of the students a safe and supportive environment while making history enjoyable. Mr. Cornforth, the floor is yours. All right, Tajan just said everything I was supposed to say. So I, I, got, nothing, I got nothing left. Thank you, Tajan. Um, all right, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm typically used to using Google Meet, so if I if you can't hear me, or if it looks like I'm supposed to be presenting and it's not presenting, or if there's an issue, somebody just unmute, let me know. Um, if I'm making a mistake, I have no issues with people pointing that out for me. So first thing I'm gonna try and do is do a quick little share screen here, and then I'm gonna need some feedback to make sure that everybody can see that can somebody tell me yes or no they can see my screen we can see it okay so second thing i'm going to want for some people um just because i'm sure that you've been uh listening to people talk and i like to get people up and moving uh if possible can you un uh can you turn your cameras on so i can see some people because i also like a little bit of feedback so if you could turn your cameras on uh the ones that i see right now uh, i don't see anybody on just yet but hopefully people can turn cameras on. Oh, I see Rohan's got his on. Thank you, Rohan, I appreciate it. Uh, Tajan's got his on. Rachel, Darren, thank you, I appreciate it. So um, first thing I'm gonna have everybody do, Natalie, thank you. Um, I'm gonna have everybody stand up and move away from your desk. First thing I'm gonna have you do is stand up and move away from your desk. I know this is probably not what you were expecting. You thought I was just gonna come in and start talking at all of you. So everyone's gonna stand up, give yourself some space. You're gonna need like arms, length, space kind of on either side right so before i get going i just want to make sure everybody's nice and warm because i think we probably just sat through uh, like a 30 minute presentation so just a little bit of movement just put arms out to the side little baby circles forward forward baby circles no nope, small circles baby circles little ones little ones little okay now backwards baby circles backwards little baby circles backwards now we're going to go big circles forwards big circles forward Fantastic. Now we're going to go big circles backwards. All right. Now do one arm forward, one arm backwards. All right. Sweet. Now that you are like your brain is going, you're thinking a little bit, your blood's flowing a little bit. It's harder than you think. It's like this super awkward. I don't know. There's a transition in there that's a little bit weird. So um, I like to get people up and moving a little bit. I like to get people involved. So if I ask for some involvement, if I ask you to unmute, say something, um, please jump in, ask those questions. Um, and if I'm missing something, let me know. So a little bit about myself, who am I, what do I do? And if it looks like I'm growing horns, sorry about that, it's because I've got um, our Scottish Highland cow back there. His name is Angus. It's both a Scottish name and a pun. So he's just hanging out in the back. So he'll be keeping an eye on you. Um, I, uh, as Tajan has said, I'm a teacher at Torrey Pines High School. I've been teaching there for seven years now. I taught up in Anaheim for four years before that. Uh, I was an avid tutor at Oceanside High School and a substitute teacher there before that. Uh, and many of you might think to yourself, yeah, I'm a student. I'm in classrooms. I know what teachers do. Um, this is not something that's super interesting because I experience it every single day. Um, and that might be true. My hope is that you're gonna find something interesting, something positive to take away from this. Um, and my hope is that I'm a little bit different in the way that I approach things, hopefully doing baby circles at the beginning of the day, show that to you, but I don't go straight into it. So you'll see a couple different pictures there. Uh, sadly, I don't take a whole lot of pictures in my classroom because I'm involved in the classroom doing things. So you'll see some pictures of me adventuring, which is a big part of who I am and what I do as well. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see me dressed up as you can say George Washington, you can say Alexander Hamilton, whatever you want. Uh, there is a wig that goes with that. I just didn't happen to have the wig on at that point. Um, but that is a picture that somebody else took of me when I won Teacher of the Year last year at Torrey Pines High School. So I'm, I'm doing something right occasionally. Uh, and when I think about teaching, I don't see myself as a deliverer of information, right? When Tajan asked me to do this speech or to do this presentation, I thought to myself, man, I got to talk at people for like 25 minutes. That's, that's not how I roll. That's not what I like to do. I, I like to look at myself more as a facilitator, somebody who uh, gets a discussion going and then kind of steps out and, and let students jump in. Um, because honestly, 
when I was in school and the internet was just getting started, the only place you could get information was from your book or from your teacher. But you guys have these magic little devices now that have more information than I could ever possibly have, right? There's more information there than I could ever possibly give you. So really, I look at myself as kind of like a trail guide. And there are multiple trails to get to the same point, right? There are multiple ways for you to get to the point that you want to get to. So I look at myself as kind of facilitating that learning in the classroom. And rather than simply lecturing all the time, whenever possible, my goal in class is to get students to experience history as opposed to simply learn about history. So I see a couple of faces that I recognize. Students in my classes have experienced some of this. Um, I like to do games in class that are relevant for US history. So um, there's a, a, a game that we do that I call the survivor game. And it ends up being a World War I activity where students have stolen desks from each other on either side of the class and they've got foam balls that they end up throwing at each other and they're yelling across the class. Um, I used to do it with markers, but then somebody got bloody, so it didn't work with markers anymore. Uh, so I switched to the foam balls. Those work much better. Uh, I do a, a, an Ellis Island immigration activity. Rather than teaching students about Ellis Island, each student gets a little Italian, Russian, Greek, Armenian immigration card and gets to go through Ellis Island while I talk at them in Italian for the entire period and they have no idea what's going on. I intentionally bring in students that speak a foreign language so they can speak the foreign language to the students the entire period. Again, to give them the experience of what it might have been like to come to the United States not knowing the language all that well, rather than simply saying, it was tough for immigrants to come to America, right? Um, some of those things have been hard to do with COVID, obviously, so I've had to modify some things, but I have still been able to do some. There was this pink card, green card game where students had to choose whether they wanted to do what was best for themselves or what was best for the class, and that's how they learned about unions in the late 1800s. Um, in the 1920s, my U.S. history class has already done this. Uh, I teach the Charleston. Even through, uh, even through Zoom, I make everybody get up. We dance. We move. Uh, everybody is a historical figure from the 1920s, whether it's F. Scott Fitzgerald um, or Henry Ford or Margaret Sanger or Alice Paul, and they interact with other historical figures in breakout rooms. So like I said, it's not just about teaching. It's about facilitating. It's about creating kind of an interactive experience. My hope is that students have an emotional connection to my class. Sometimes that emotional connection is frustration. Uh, and sometimes that's intentional, like the pink card, green card game. They're supposed to be mad. I give them extra credit points just because I destroy their faith in humanity. And that's my goal, right? That is my goal for that day. So they have an emotional connection to that. Um, and the thing that I like about that is I have students five, 10 years later that, that, that I run into and they're like, Mr. Cornforth, are you still doing the pink card, green card game? Mr. Cornforth, are you still doing the Ellis Island activity? These little things that I have done, they're not asking, Mr. Cornforth, are you still teaching about the bank war of the, 19, of the 1830s? Are you still teaching about Andrew Jackson and his conflict with Nicholas Biddle? That stuff you don't remember. It's the experiences and the emotions that are connected to it. Um, so if you are interested in teaching, I think that's something that you, could, you should hopefully hang on to. Um, the other thing that I try and do, a lot of students look at history and they say, why does it matter? I throw an Italian phrase out there. It's que me ne frega. Why do I care? Right? Um, and honestly, a lot of it doesn't, doesn't matter. Like, if you don't make the connections, it doesn't matter. Um, but I do my best whenever possible to connect it to the present. And I have this running mantra in class that history is repetitive. And history teachers are repetitive. So if I repeat myself in this process, I'm sorry, I've given you fair warning, I can be repetitive. All right. But those connections to the present are important because that is what students are going to walk away with. All right. This election in 1860 that led to the American Civil War, can we compare it to the election of 2020 that led to the storming of the nation's capital? What are the similarities? What are the differences? That makes that election in 1860 a whole lot more relevant today. All right, so trying to make those connections and I've had multiple students, this is one of the favorite things that I love hearing from students who come up to me at the end of the year and they're like, Mr. Cornforth, I really didn't like history before I took your class. And I'm still going STEM, but I really like history now, All right? And I'm totally okay with that. Go STEM, that's fine, that's okay. But at least you have an appreciation and an understanding of history um, that you can find some relevance to the things that have happened in the past. Uh, and then the last one that I do uh, as kind of a teacher is my goal 
outside of simply enabling learning is to enable student growth, whether that's scholastically or whether that's as an individual and a human being. I very much believe in growth mindset. I very much believe in let's fail to figure out how to be better. Um, I, I want my students to learn and grow and I look to support them as individuals. Uh, if they're having a tough time, if something has happened with their family, if something has happened with their uh, friends, you know, I like to check in with students. I had individual conferences with all my students at the beginning of the second semester because I just wanted to see how they were doing. And literally my first question to all of them was, how are you? Not like the, you're walking past someone, hey, what's up, how you doing? And everyone just says, okay, but like genuinely, how are you? And so I think that's important for those of you that are considering teaching is to look at each of these students, not simply as students that need to get work done, but as individuals and as human beings that you are facilitating their growth as individuals, All right? Um, how did I get here? How did I get to be a teacher at Torrey Pines High School? Um, I know that this looks kind of chaotic and it is intentionally designed to look chaotic. Oh, I don't think I shared with, hold on. I don't think I shared with audio. So let me go back really quick. Um, Cause I got to play a little song for you. Share screen, share sound, try that again. All right, now I'm gonna need thumbs up to confirm if we can hear the song or not. The long and winding road All right, that's all we get. I'm not gonna play the whole song. I just wanted to tell you it's a long and winding road because as I look at my students now, I see them looking like tunnel vision straight ahead. I got to get to this point. I got to get the A in your class and I got to get the A in AP Bio so that I can take these classes as a senior so that I can get into Harvard and then I can get into Harvard and I can get into Stanford Law School and then I can graduate from Stanford Law School and I can be a lawyer by the time I'm 25 and then by the time I'm 30, I'm going to have a kid in the house. And like it's straight on tunnel vision. And for most of us, it's not a straight line. I'm not saying don't try and walk that straight line, but for most of us, we're pew, 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 all over the place. So um, my path to becoming a teacher at Torrey Pines High School, uh, I started at Oceanside High School. So for those of you that are local, you know, uh, North County, uh, not a great reputation as either a city or a school when I was going there. Uh, my wife also grew up in San Diego County and she told me about how they were afraid to come to Oceanside High School because they thought they were gonna get shot. Uh, I had people who asked me that I worked with them in Carlsbad and they asked me, do you wear a bulletproof vest to school? Um, so not a great reputation. In spite of that, I did very well. Um, I took pretty much every AP class you could take at Oceanside High School, which is not nearly as many as you can take at Torrey Pines now. Um, I played a ton of sports. Uh, I was in basketball. I ran cross country. I ran track. I was super involved in school and I absolutely loved it. And one of the things that I loved was the connection that I had with some of my teachers, one of them being my biology teacher freshman year, Mr. Collins. And this guy was energetic, even though he was like late 60s, early 70s, like could have been retired a long time ago. He brought energy every single day. He brought enthusiasm every single day. He would use his Bunsen burner to like make lentils and oatmeal in class. And he'd walk around and eat with the pot that was probably as old as he was, like as he was teaching in class. Um, he dressed up like Mama Luigi to teach us about botulism one day. So maybe that's where I get my affinity for dressing up in class. Um, but because of his teaching, I really enjoyed bio. I really enjoyed physiology. And when I applied to UC Berkeley, I got in as a molecular cell biology major. So see, I can do STEM too, except I couldn't. Um, because after a semester, I decided basically, you know what? this is not what I like. This is not something I'm interested in. It's, I'm not really enjoying it. I don't want to try and do this for the next 10 years just so I can be a doctor. So that straight line tunnel vision of being a doctor immediately got blown up, right? So then I had to figure out what I wanted to do. So I took some, I took some GE classes. And one of my GE classes was um, a U.S. history class from colonial to civil war. And it's 200 student lecture hall. You'd think a 200 student lecture hall would be the most boring class ever. But literally, this teacher was walking up and down every single aisle, in and out of the row, gesturing, mannerism, super active, super engaged. And I just thought to myself, wow, this is awesome. She also was fantastic because sophomore year, when I took her class, is when 9-11 happened. 
This is my first year living on my own outside of the dorm, you know, the kind of shelter of the dorm. And, you know, the world, you know, is literally blown up in front of you. Um, and so I went to class the day of 9-11 and I had two classes that day. My U.S. history teacher sat down with us and said, we're not going to do class, but I will answer any questions. This is what I know. What do you guys have? What do you want to talk about? Let's, let's just talk. And she sat there and talked with us for 45 minutes and answered any questions that she could answer. Did a very good job of kind of um, placating students and making sure they felt safe. My other teacher said, let's have a moment of silence. Okay, today we're gonna learn about the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution began in England in the 1750s and just like plowed through the day. So when I think about teaching now and I think about what the world looks like today, when those big events happen, I try not to just overlook them. When the Capitol got stormed, I don't just say, hey guys, the Capitol got stormed yesterday, that kind of sucked. Let's, uh, let's learn about Andrew Jackson, right? I don't just move on. So something to think about, if, again, if you are thinking about becoming a teacher, um, and so as a result of that awesome U.S. history teacher, I chose to major in history um, because I met a girl in one of my Italian classes. I chose to minor in Italian studies. Um, and that's why you see the picture of Siena uh, in the upper right hand corner there. And I spent a semester studying abroad. Highly, highly, highly recommend that you do a semester abroad, if at all possible. It is one of the best experiences you can possibly have in college. It's amazing to be able to study in a foreign country, to be able to travel. Um, it was absolutely fantastic, so I highly recommend it. All right, so I graduated from UC Berkeley. Um, I had a history degree, I had an Italian studies minor. Anybody wanna take a wild guess as to what my uh, first job was when I graduated? This is where I'm asking for student involvement. Let's see, I, wanna, I don't know if I can see hands pop up or anything. Darren, because I can see you, I'm gonna call on you and you get to take a wild guess. What do you think? Um, I would guess maybe with a history degree, maybe teaching, I'm, I'm not really sure. All right, so Darren says I go straight into teaching. Rohan, what do you think? Um, you worked at REI? I worked at REI. Ah, oh, Rohan's cheating, he's looking at the sheet. I see you, Rohan. Good eye, good eye. All right, so REI is on there as well. This long and winding road hasn't quite gotten to REI just yet. That's a good guess. Natalie, you're gonna take our last guess. And I'm sorry I'm calling on the three of you, but those are the three that I can see on my screen right now. Um, was it something like unrelated? Like, did you work at, um, oh, I don't know, did you? Yeah, I would say, so you didn't teach? I did not teach. You did not Remember teach. the song, the song is the long and winding road. It's not a straight path. Okay, then I'll guess something that was on, or did you go to another school? Not yet, but I like what you're thinking because you see some other schools up there. I like that you guys are like using the clues I've got up there. Natalie has clearly decided I didn't go directly into teaching. She's saying, Darren, Darren guest teaching, she's going the other end. My first job when I graduated with a history degree from UC Berkeley was I did a construction project. I redid somebody's backyard. I built a deck around their jacuzzi and I redid their lawn and their irrigation. And at the same time, I waited tables, All right? So I didn't jump directly into anything. And I did that for a while. I would work and then I would travel and I would work and save up money and travel. And it wasn't until uh, I met my wife at the restaurant that I worked at, Sammy's Wood Fired Pizza. Um, I met her at Sammy's. Um, it wasn't until I met her that I ended up going back to school and I went back to Cal State San Marcos. Uh, I got my credential after my dad basically said, okay, dude, you got a history degree from Berkeley, do something with it, stop waiting tables. That also helped your parents giving you a little kick in the butt sometimes. Um, so I went to Cal State San Marcos. I did my student teaching at Vista and at SDA. So I have some connections to San Diego district there. Um, and then it was 2010 when I graduated. The economy sucked and teaching jobs were sparse. So I drove from Oceanside to Anaheim, which is about 75 miles each way for my first job, my first teaching job. Uh, and I taught up at Anaheim for four years, driving 150 miles a day. 
Um, I bought a Prius very quickly to make sure that I was using less gas. Uh, and while I was doing that, I was also, uh, as Rohan alluded to, working at REI because my other passion was the outdoors. And so that facilitated my other passion as well. Eventually, I got my master's from Concordia University. I did that online because one of the awesome things about teaching is you can clearly see the pay scale. You can see how much you make if you have X amount of units after you graduate. If you get a master's, you make this much more. And so I could quickly do the math and say, well, if I get my master's, it costs this much. And in four years, it's paid off. And then basically from that point on, it's all just extra money. Um, so I, I got my master's. And then I was very, very fortunate to get hired at Corey Pines uh, seven years ago. And like I said, I've, I've taught AVID, which I really love. I worked as an AVID tutor for a while. Um, I think it's a great program. I've taught U.S. history. I've taught AP U.S. history. I teach AP U.S. history humanities. I've taught world history. Um, I also occasionally, if I catch a student doing math in my class, we'll just take their worksheet and put the math problem up on the board, and then we'll do some math in class just for fun. Um, so I'm not afraid to do that as well. But it wasn't a straight shot. It wasn't a, oh, I graduate. I want to be a teacher. I'm going to jump right in. It was a, I'm going to bounce around a little bit, waiting tables and, and you know, um, at one point I went to Australia and uh, just bummed around Australia for like two months. Like I had a ticket in and a ticket out two months later. I had a white t-shirt that I had written with Sharpie Vagabundo on. Um, and I literally just kind of aimlessly worked my way up the uh, Eastern Australian coast. And, you know, when I, when I met my wife, or the woman who became my wife, and, and that relationship moved forward, I realized I needed to do something a little bit better. And I had enjoyed working as an avid tutor, and I decided to get my credential and have absolutely loved it. Um, I absolutely love what I do. If you choose to go into teaching, I want you to absolutely love what you do. I want you to go in loving both the content, but more importantly than the content, loving the interaction with the students and loving that process with the students, because that's really what it's all about. All right? No, we're not going to listen to the song again. We're going to the next slide. So what have I learned? What have I learned in this whole process, uh, this long and winding road? Uh, number one, we have to be adaptable. Human beings are probably the most adaptable planet on the face of the earth, and yet we suck at change, right? We're not good at change. we were resistant to change. We don't want to change. So be open to change. Be open to that straight road taking a fork to the left, taking a fork to the right, taking a different path, all right? Resilience. I have told my students that this year, this year of COVID has taught them adaptability and resilience, the ability to overcome difficulties and struggles. Um, you did not expect in March of last year, at the beginning of March of last year, that you would be in your room studying for the next year. That was probably not your goal, but many of you have been able to achieve success through that. So even though it is difficult finding ways to achieve success, if you fail a test, um, find a way to overcome it. Find a way to talk to a teacher. Find a way to improve. Don't let failure define you. Don't let failure be something that ruins you. Look at failure as something that you can learn from. Look at challenges as something that will help you grow. And this ties into my adventuring and the things that I like to do outdoors. All right, people are like, why would you want to walk to the top, top of Mount Whitney? Because it's a challenge and it helps me grow as an individual to say, look, I can do this. Why would you want to ride your bike from San Francisco to Oceanside? What's the point of that? It's something that is proving that I can overcome a, an obstacle, a challenge. All right, this one is super important for me. Punctuality. I don't care what you choose to do with your life, be on time. And by on time, I mean early. Early is on time, on time is late, late means you're fired. Any questions? No, not about that one, we're good. Be on time and on time means early, fantastic. Um, this one I have had to learn the hard way and I think many students have had to learn the hard way especially as they're trying to work their way through school and this super competitive process of getting into college and getting into the right college. The ability to cheat is easier, um, the, uh, Draw to cheat is there, but do what you do with integrity. Um, do what you do knowing it is the right thing, not the easy thing. And that's something I try and pass on to my own kids. That's something I try and pass on to my students. 
you're all taking tests online. You're all taking tests at home right now. I have you keep your cameras on, but I can't see what's outside of your camera view. Do what you do with integrity. Be solid, upstanding human beings in whatever you choose to do, whatever you choose to do. A lot of people say, find your passion. And I think sometimes that's tough for people. So I like to tell people to do what you do with passion. You might not be passionate about it, but find a way to put yourself into that process, right? Find a way to find joy in that process, even if it's not something that you necessarily want to do, is to find a way to put your passion into it. Um, because it is difficult for people to find what they are passionate about sometimes. And then this last one, I know this is long, and this is the last one, I swear. I swear this is the last one. Um, but this is one of my favorite quotes. I share this with my students at the beginning of the year uh, as we do our quote project. Uh, I want to make sure, okay, good, I'm still, still okay on time. Um, because many of us look, look at life and we feel like we have to be perfect and flawless, and sometimes that means we choose not to participate. Um, but this is a quote by Teddy Roosevelt. It is not the critic who counts, right? It is the man who is in the arena, right? And who at worst, if he fails, fails while daring greatly. I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you because that's one of my pet peeves is when people read an entire presentation to me. Um, but the idea of failing while daring greatly, right? Be out there, try something new, try something that makes you uncomfortable. Try something that you don't think you're gonna succeed in. Try something you know you're not gonna succeed in and see what you can learn from that process even if you don't succeed, all right? Whether you choose to be a teacher or whether you choose to be a lawyer or whether you choose to go STEM, whatever you choose to be, continue to push yourself to grow, continue to challenge yourself by trying new things, doing different things. I lied, this is the last one, but this is just questions. So I think, all right, um, so I think there are some questions in here now. I see, why did I decide to teach high school instead of younger students? This is one of those things where um, you have to enjoy the interactions that you have with those individuals. And I, you know, my dad was a teacher in high school. I started working as an avid tutor in high school. I enjoyed that. As much as I have enjoyed working with young kids and I've got a, an eight and a 12 year old and I've coached their baseball and soccer and basketball teams, um, they're just a little squirrely for me, honestly. Um, they, my wife is going to be an elementary school teacher and she loves it. But for me, um, I love working with students that are like on the cusp of adulthood, which we label as 18, but you know, um, that, that they're making those big connections between what we're studying and how it is relevant in life. And they're ready to go off and, and fundamentally change the world. So I've just really enjoyed that kind of high school level experience. Um, the hardest part of my job, the hardest part of my job is probably um, emails, meetings, and grading. That's the part of the job that I, that I enjoy the least. Um, it's, I, I, I love being in the classroom. I could be in the classroom all day. I could interact with students all day long. Um, but sitting down and like responding to emails or being in a meeting with other teachers where we spend an hour talking about something we could probably figure out in 10 minutes um, is, is a real challenge for me. Uh, what events did I run and track? Uh, I was, as a freshman, I did long jump and triple jump and pole vault. Uh, as a junior and a senior, I did the 800, the 3200 pole vault, and then when everyone was injured at the end of the track meet and we needed four people to run four by four, I ran four by four as well. Um, I love it. It's a lot of fun. I prefer cross country just because even though I'm a history teacher and I repeat myself, track running eight laps around the same circle gets a little boring. Um, so like I would have conversations with people as I was running sometimes. Track coach did not like that. And then what advice would you give to students who aren't sure what field they might want to go into? Uh, apply undecided. Um, apply undeclared, apply for something you think you might want to go into, but be willing to change. Talk to students at the university that have taken classes that they're interested in and give those a shot. Um, enjoy your GE classes and find the GE classes that really inspire you. Um, and this, this might sound a little bit weird coming from a teacher, but oftentimes a degree at the end of the day 
is a piece of paper that says you're resilient and you had $80,000, right? So, um, you know, try and find something that you are able to find joy in that you can still make enough money to support yourself and the things you want to do. Are there any other questions? I think I've reached my time, but I just want to. I think we're good with questions. If anyone has any other questions, they can reach out to us and we can reach out to Mr. Cornforth. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Do I log out now? I'm not sure how this process goes. <laughs>